Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 12 of my design patterns video tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about the command design pattern. Now, I'm going to show you this in numerous different ways. I'm going to explain it as a simple definition. I'm going to explain it as a walkthrough just using words. Then I'm going to show you a UML diagram. Then on top of that, I'm going to show you all of the code. And then on top of that, all the code is available underneath the video. So if you go through all five or six of those steps, I guarantee you will understand the command design pattern. So let's get into it. So what is the command design pattern? Well, the basic definition is the command design pattern is a behavioral design pattern in which an object is used to represent and encapsulate all the information needed to call a method at a later time. This information includes the method name, the object that owns the method, and the values for the method parameters. Now, if that didn't make any sense, let's move on and explain it in a completely different way. Basically, what it allows you to do is store lists of codes that are executed at a later time or many times. And on top of that, normally with the command design pattern, pattern there's a capability for you to undo commands. Basically what happens is the client or the application part of your program says I want a specific command or a list of code to be executed whenever a method called execute is called on one of these encapsulated hidden objects. And then an object called the invoker whenever it is invoked to perform a command to set it in motion transfers this command to another object that is called the receiver and the receiver has the actual code that you want to execute and whenever it gets the command from the invoker to execute it it executes it so basically if we have this object down here called turn TV on this is actually a command this command is defined then device button which is another class or object that's going to be created whenever it is called it sends turn TV on of course there's going to be interfaces between all of this so we can use polymorphism so whenever turn TV on is called that method then will be executed by the receiver or television, another object, and here is turn TV on. So there's another explanation. So let's look at it from another way. Okay, here is the client again, and it's going to define a device, which is going to be an object that's going to contain a whole bunch of different methods that can be run for that very specific device object. It's going to define a command that they want to be issued. This is, again, the application part of the client, and the command object has one method inside of it called execute, and you can see everything over here. So let's bring in the invoker to this and then explain everything that goes on. Okay, here is the invoker, which is just going to be an object that is going to have a method inside of it. In this situation, it's going to be called press. Now, when press is called, it's going to call execute on the command object. Here is execute as I am referring to it. Of course, it's going to refer to it through an interface for polymorphism, but either way. So press is called on this object called device button, and it calls execute on turn TV on. Then what happens is execute tells the television object that is right here to execute the on method, which is up here in this television object. In essence, that is the command design pattern. Device button is called, specifically press, a method inside of it, or at least that's what I'm going to use. Then execute is called on a, another object called the command object. Execute is over here. Whenever execute is called, all it does is it says, hey, my job as an object is to turn televisions on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the television object to execute the method on that is inside of it. So that's sort of an explanation in that regards. So what are the benefits of the command design pattern? Well, it allows you to set aside a list of commands for later use, like I've mentioned before. On top of that, a class is a great place to store procedures that you want to be able to execute multiple times. You're going to be able to store multiple commands in a class to use over and over. And on top of that, like I said before, most of the time you're going to implement undo procedures so that you can undo previous commands. The only negative with the command design pattern is that you need to create many small classes to store lists of these commands. So that's a basic rundown, so let's just jump right into the code. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to need to do here is to create an interface that is going to be used to create all of my receivers. That sounds really complicated, but it's really not. So I'm going to create an interface, and it's going to be called Electronic Device. And basically what I'm going to do is implement a remote control sort of system here. So real simple, we're just going to go Public Interface Electronic Device. Okay, so there's going to be our interface that we're going to build all our receivers from. And then I need to define all of the different methods that each one of these devices is going to have. So on, it's going to be able to turn itself on. It's going to be able to turn itself off. 
it's going to have the capability to turn the volume up and it's also going to have capability to turn the volume down. And there you are. And of course, make sure you spell it right. So there's our interface that we're gonna to use to make all of our electronic devices or receivers. And so let's just jump right into it and let's make a receiver called television.java. So here's television.java. We're just gonna go public class television. And I know I say it all the time, but really, at least for myself, I wasn't able to completely understand this pattern until I saw it in print. So of course I provide you that option underneath this video. Okay, so just going to implement that electronic device. And then we're gonna come in here and Eclipse is gonna allow us to add unimplemented methods. So I don't have to type all that stuff out. And then inside of here, I'm gonna create myself a private method and it's just going to contain a value for volume and it's gonna start out at zero. And then I'm just gonna keep this really simple. I'm gonna say whenever these are called, of course you could have many different things occur here, but I'm just gonna say TV is on just to keep it really nice and simple. And then in this situation, TV is off, TV volume is at, and then we'll just throw volume inside of there, which is that private variable that we have. And TV volume is at, and throw that inside of there as well. And then all we're gonna wanna do here is just go volume plus plus to increment that, and then volume negative negative. There you are, you just created yourself a receiver called television that's going to be able to implement these very specific commands. Basically all we're doing here is we're making commands very unspecific and eventually they will lead here to print and execute the actual real commands themselves. So that's all you're gonna have to do with that. So now let's go and create our command interface that every single command is going to have to implement. And it's gonna be simple as well. We're just gonna go public, interface, command, and this is gonna be extremely simple. We're just going to say public void execute. Everybody that wants to use this command interface must have an execute option. So that's pretty simple. And guess what, you're done. So now let's start creating some very specific commands. We're gonna go into turn TV on .java right there. And then we're gonna go public class turn TV on implements command, of course, because that's what we just created and then have it come in here and put in my execute method so that everything's nice there. And then inside of this, this guy's gonna need to know, okay, well, what exact electronic device do you want me to be working with? So I'm gonna store that inside of here and then turn TV on. I'm gonna create a constructor here and it's just going to be passed an electronic device to perform this command on, except I'm gonna change this to new device and then just go the device is equal to new device, which is going to be passed to it. So pretty simple. And then we come down to the execute part of this guy. And all it's gonna do is say, okay, that device that you sent me, since I am known as the turn TV on command, what I want to do here is call the on method for said device. Boom, you're all done. That's all we need to do. You just implemented your first command object inside of here. And guess what? Turn TV off is gonna operate in much the same way. So where is turn TV off? There it is. Turn TV off Java. click on that. Paste inside of there, turn TV off is going to be the name for that. And then we're just gonna come through here and make a couple little changes, but pretty simple stuff. See, just about everything's already done there. And then down here, since it's the turn TV off, we're gonna call the off method on the device. And in case you forgot, let's just go over to television.java. See, all it's doing is coming here and calling these very specific methods for these very specific objects. So no big deal. So let's get back to turn TV off.java and look at it again. And that's it, you're done. We just did that. As you can see, remember I said one of the negatives is it has a whole bunch of little classes. Now that can also be a positive. So let's file save that. And let's go over to turn TV up.java, paste that in there, turn TV. Up, gonna implement command just like before. Let's change that to up, everything else is the same. And then down here, we're just gonna go the device and we wanna call the method volume up. There you are, just did another one. And if you want to, you can go and also create turn TV down, but in this situation, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna show you in a minute how to use an undo command to do exactly that. So what does that leave us with? That leaves us with the invoker and it is going to have a method. It's first off, its name is gonna be device button because we're using sort of like a remote sort of thing here. So we're gonna come inside of this and it's gonna have a method called press that when executed is gonna cause the execute method to be called. 
And then, of course, the execute method for the command interface then calls the method assigned in the class that implements the command interface. Okay, so just go public class device button. There that is. And then it's going to be passed command, of course, in a generic sort of format. And we're going to go public device button command. New command is going to be passed over to it. And I'm just going to go the command, just like I always do, is equal to new command. And then we're going to create public press that I've been talking about so much. Very, very complicated method. What's it going to do? It's going to say the command. I want you to run execute, just like we said before. And then it's going to worry about command and all of the different objects that are implementing the command interface are then going to just execute that execute command. Again, let's click on command. What's it do? Forces all commands to have an execute method. Here's turn TV on. There it does. Whenever execute is going to be called on this method, it instead calls another method for our device. And where is our device? Well, here's television.java. There it is. You just have to wrap your head around it. Just look at it from a couple different directions and you'll get it. So let's get back into device button. And yes, indeed, it's done as well. So then what do we need to do? Well, we're going to have to create something else called tvremote.java. And in essence, what tvremote.java is going to do is it's going to return the type of device that we're going to use. Now I chose to keep this fairly simple, but of course you could have it work with multiple different devices. And I'm going to show you another way to work with a completely different device other than television here in a second. But basically what I'm going to do here is just go public static electronic device get device. Okay, so it's going to have this static method inside of it. And in this situation, it's just going to return a new television which is just going to say, hey, we're just going to be using a television object here as our receiver to handle everything. So that's pretty simple. So now we're going to go into play with remote.java, and this is the actual application, and it's going to actually create all this stuff. So I need a couple different things here. I'm going to go Java Util, array list, and then I'm also going to use a basic list. So just chop off the array part, and there you go. Now you have all the libraries that we're going to use here. I'm going to go public class play with remote. And then what are we going to do? Since this is our application, we're going to have public static void main args. And then we want to get the electronic device that we want to use. And we're just going to go new device is equal to TV remote dot get device. And what is that going to do for me? Let's just take a look. Here's TV remote. It's going to return a television. So it's going to say, hey, you want a device, well, you're going to work with television. Now, of course, we could figure out different ways to come in here and use all the other different devices. And in fact, I'm going to show you another different way to do that. And then what are we going to do? We're going to go turn TV on. And this is going to be called the on command is equal to new turn TV on. Here we are defining a command that we want this device to be performing here. We're going to send the device over and have it execute. And like I said before, turn TV on is just going to contain a command to turn on the TV when execute is called on this command object. And then, of course, it's going to execute the method on inside of the television device. Just let the information wash over you. You'll get it. OK, so then we're going to go device button. This is going to be the receiver and it is going to perform certain actions whenever it is called. So we're going to go to device button and we're going to send it the on command. Now, of course, it just sees it as a regular command. But the receiver later on will figure it all out and make everything work beautifully. Okay, so we have everything set up. We have our button, which is going to set everything into motion. We have our electronics device that's going to contain all the methods we want executed. And then we have our very specific command. So whenever the button is going to be pressed, on, pressed, there we are. Just press the button on our remote control. Then what it's going to do is it's going to send a generic command over that's going to be on command that isn't really going to be generic because it's going to be called turn TV on, which isn't really going to be generic because it is of type turn TV on, which of course you know does one thing to devices, it calls the on method on them. So let's file save it and see what happens. Execute. And you can see TV is on. That's all it took. Sounds more complicated than it is. So how complicated is it to come in here and now turn our television off? Well, basically, we're just going to copy this and change a couple different things here. I'm just going to divide this up a little bit so it's easier to tell what's going on. I'm going to paste that inside of there. Now, if we want to perform a different action, what are we going to need to do? We're going to have to change the action that's performed. So now we're going to say turn TV off. And I'm going to call this guy the off command. 
And then of course, we're gonna need to change this to off as well. However, we're still gonna pass it the TV object, so that doesn't need to change. We're gonna lop this off of here because we already defined it. And here we're going to pass the off command, which we just created. And here on press, doesn't care what type of command you're sending, it's gonna work either way. So let's execute that. And you can see I turned the TV on and then I turned the television off. So let's see what happens whenever we come in here and start playing around with the volume. And even better, can we call press multiple times without things flipping out? Yes, we can. Now, if we want to make the volume go up, we're going to go turn TV up. Just change our type on our command. And then in here, I'm going to go a volume up command, turn TV up. We're still going to use a generic device. Don't need to worry about that. On pressed, of course, is going to change here. And then we're just going to send the right command to it like that. And then we're going to not only press the button once, why don't we press it a couple times and execute. And there you go, the volume has been increased. See, one, two, three, it started out at zero. So pretty cool, really implementing a remote control here. So now let's throw another device into the mix, just to show you how simple that is to work with. We don't have to touch electronic device in any way as long as we don't need to have any other methods implemented. Uh, let's say we want to have radio.java created. How hard is that? Well, we're going to go public class, radio, implements, electronic device. And just to save ourselves some time, I'm going to jump inside of here. I'm going to say, okay, I need all this stuff. Copy, jump back into radio, paste. There you go, because the radio is also going to have a volume. So now all we need to do is change this from TV to radio. And that's all we're going to need to do. Of course, you could do a lot more, but that works. And then we're also going to create the capability to turn off all the televisions and all the radios all at one time. And to do that, we're going to have a class called turn it all off .java. And to get that to work, we're going to go import Java util, and we're going to use a list to shut everything off. Public class turn it all off. So this is like a master off switch to shut everything off at once. And this is going to be implement the command again. And what is it going to force me to do? Pretty simple. It just wants me to implement execute because everything that implements command must do that. So what am I going to do here? Since I want to be able to turn all of them off, I'm going to need all the electronic devices that are currently on or set up to work with our little system sent to me as a list. So I'm going to refer to those as the devices, just like that. And then I'm going to create a constructor, public turn it all off list and what's it going to be sent electronic device so paste that inside of there and here i'm going to say new devices like that and then to transfer all of these devices that i now want to control in one fell swoop i'm going to take the new devices list that's going to be sent to me and i'm going to save it to my own personalized list all right now we get to execute and what we're going to do here with execute is we're going to shut all of them off using an enhanced for loop so they are all electronic devices, so that's cool. And we're going to say device individually, and then the, the devices, of course, is our list. And then to shut every one of these devices off, we just need to go device.off. There you go. It's going to flip through every single device in the list and shut every single one of them off. That's pretty cool. So let's jump back over into playwithremote.java, and let's add those capabilities which is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to come in here, make another dividing line inside of there so we can have a little bit more room. All right, so we need to create ourselves a whole bunch of different devices we want to work with. So I'm just going to go and create a new television, and I'm just going to call it the TV is equal to television. It's a fun tutorial to do. And then I'm going to do radio. The radio is equal to new, and it is a radio object. Then I need to create myself a list. And it's going to be electronic device. All devices is going to be loaded into it. So I need to go new array list electronic device like that. Okay, so got that all set up. Now I just need to add my devices to all devices list. Add the TV, all devices, add the radio. Got that set up. And now what I need to do is just send the electronic devices to turn it all off. Where a call to run execute on this function will call off for each device in my list. Also pretty simple, so turn it all off. Turn off devices is equal to new. I don't feel like turn it all off again. So there it is. And I just need to tell it to shut off every single device in my list. And it will. 
And then I need to go device button, turn them off is equal to new. And then this is going to be device button. So it's like I'm putting a new button on my remote control dynamically. And then I'm going to send over, turn off devices to it so that it knows what devices to shut off. And now that I created my new button, I just need to call press on it to press that button and all the devices will be shut off. So let's execute it and what should happen. There it is. So I turn my TV on, turn it off, turn the volume up to three, turn TV off and radio off all in one fell swoop. So now let's implement our undo command. I'm gonna do this to a certain extent and I'm gonna leave part of it for you to do as homework. But either way, it is common to be able to undo commands using a command pattern. It's not required, but it's just something that is very common that you will say. And to do so, the device button will have a method called undo, which will perform the opposite action or whatever the normal command performs. And to implement undo, you're just going to need to add it to every single class in which you have the execute method. So what are we going to need to do here? Well, we're going to have to go into command.java, which we created already, and we just need to implement the capability to undo commands. So I'm just going to change execute in this situation to undo. File save, and there you go. Now you can undo commands. Now you're just going to have to go through all of your individual commands and also implement undo with those commands. So turn it off now, all of a sudden is going to say, hey, guess what? You need to do undo now. So real simple, I'm just going to come up here. And what is the opposite of turning a device on? Well, of course, it's turning device off. And look at that. You just did it. You just implemented undo in what? three or four keystrokes. So that's pretty cool. And I'm actually going to just going to copy this guy right here. And then I'm just going to go into all the other different things here. So turn TV up. Let's go into there and let's bounce down here, paste that inside of there. And what is the opposite of turn TV up? Well, turn our volume down, volume down. And there you are. Just implemented that. Not too hard. And then we also need to go into device button dot Java because we're going to add ourselves a new type of button here. And it's going to be a simple button. We're just going to copy press. And instead, we're going to say, I want to give them the capability to press undo. So there we are. And then the command here is going to be changed to undo, which we already created in our command interface. It's also pretty easy. I could then go into turn it all off. Where is turn it all off? There it is. Turn it all off Java. Bounce inside of there. And pretty much do exactly the same thing that execute does, except we're going to do it using undo instead of execute. So tab and undo. And instead of off, we're just going to switch off to on. See, just does the opposite of what it did before. And now we can jump back into play with remote.java right here. And let's start playing with the capability to undo stuff. So instead, we're going to go turn them off. Press undo like that, file save, and now it's going to undo the last command, which was to turn everything off, and instead turn everything on. So that is a whole bunch of different ways to look at the command pattern. Like I said before, I'm going to give you homework this time. Let's say we want to do undo on every single command there is out there. I'm going to give you a hint on how to do that. Look into linked lists and saving all your different commands in linked lists and then using add first to add your commands as they execute to the beginning of the linked list. And then what you'll be able to do is go through the linked list and just do an undo command on every single command that was done last through first rather than the other way around. <laughs> Either way, Leave questions or comments below. Again, remember the codes underneath the video if you're unclear on anything. Otherwise, till next time.